ರಾತ್ರೋರಾತ್ರಿ ಹೋರಾಟನ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇರೋದು ಮೊದಲು ಅವ್ರ ಮೇಲೆ ಎಫ್ ಐ ಆರ್ ಹಾಕಿ ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ಕರಪ್ಷನ್ ವಿಚಾರದಲ್ಲಿ ಎಫ್ ಐ ಆರ್ ಹಾಕಿ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಅವ್ರನ್ನ ಬಂಧಿಸಿ Congress somewhere hinting that they will continue with their protest. They still have two more demands. One, there should be a FIR and a Prevention of Corruption Act and Ishwarapa should be arrested. I was sitting judge. I was sitting judge Kelly. Then I was sitting judge Kelly. He is also asking for an investigation by a high court sitting judge. Sitting high court judge. I was sitting judge. I was sitting judge. I was sitting judge. ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ಈಗ ಅವ್ರು ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಇದ್ರು ಭೇಟಿನೇ ಮಾಡಿಲ್ಲ ಕೆಲಸನೇ ಆಗಿಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ಸೊ ಇವೆಲ್ಲ ಕೂಡ ಅವರು ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡಿದ್ದು ಭೂಮಿ ಪೂಜೆ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದು ಕಟ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದು ಇವೆಲ್ಲ ಕೂಡ ಫೋಟೋಗಳೆಲ್ಲ ಇದೆ ಬೇಕಾದ್ರೆ ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಇಲ್ಲ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ನಾನು ಪಿ ಕೊಡ್ತೀನಿ ನಾವೆಲ್ಲ ಕೊಡ್ತೀನಿ ನಮ್ಮ ಹತ್ರ ಎಲ್ಲ ಇದೆ ಸಂತೋಷ್ ಪಾಟೀಲ್ Ishwarappa, there is evidence to prove that this work was done. We are the first one to arrest the first one. And we are the first one to arrest the first one. D.K. Shukumar now saying that their protest will continue and they are now demanding the arrest of Mr. Ishwarappa and the other two accused in this case. Nandala Jaya. At uh, D.K. Shivakumar, the Karnataka Pradesh Congress Committee president there uh, making two big demands. One, that Ishwarappa should be tried under the PCA or the Prevention of Corruption Act. And two, there should be a high court judge probe into what caused uh, Santosh Patil's death. He's asking for the immediate arrest of K.S. Ishwarappa, not just the resignation, saying that the Congress will continue uh, with its protests. Uh, I'm also joined by Sanket Yanagi of the Congress. Uh, R.K. Upadhyay is still with us, Aditya Srinivasan is still with us, and of course Vijay Prasad of uh, the Karnataka BJP. Let me uh, show them all in a multi-window. Vijay Prasad, so the Congress is not letting up. They are saying that Mr. Ishwarapa needs to be arrested, a case registered against him, against the Prevention of Corruption Act, and also a High Court judge should probe the circumstances leading up to the suicide of uh, Santosh Patil. Mr. Prasad. Yeah, uh, Zaka, Congress... See, uh, the way uh, I totally heard what uh, D.K. Shukumar was saying, okay, his voice is full of vengeance, okay? Vengeance on, uh, he's throwing up his vengeance on K.S. Ishwarappa, the personal vengeance. And having said that, if you look into the Congress, the Congress is totally jobless today. They are jobless. And they want to take up one issue, uh, whatever the issue that is happening, right from the hijab and uh, till the, uh, the, the recent one, they're totally jobless and they are taking up one issue after the other with which there is no end to it okay so this is the congress uh, this is congress's plan this is the congress propaganda to allow not to work uh, not to uh, okay. uh, uh, let the government work Sa on Sanke any Dinagi, of the this is a congress up. toolkit a congress plan not to allow the state government to work sanket firstly he is not a congressman the one who committed suicide is not a congressman he has not made any comments or see, allegations against the congress he has been associated he was congress associated worker, with the, he was congress worker one minute one minute i have not sir sir, yeah. sir one one, one at a time please sir yeah. one at a time one at a time please yes maintain the decorum what i would like one at a time sir sir please please yeah. he did not interrupt please when you when you spoke decorum. please extend him the courtesy yes sanket firstly he is a sitting bjp karyakarta he was associated with bjp leaders he has written a complaint against yedu this uh, ishwarappa and uh, he has already in a public said that ishwarappa has committed fraud breach of trust and he has cheated him by promising which was not been acted upon by mr ishwarappa on the promise of mr ishwarappa he has proceeded to but but mr yanagi mr ishwarappa <laughs> has now resigned so, what more do you want him to do The Number probe one. has not been started. No, the investigation not has sufficient. not concluded. There is no, there is nobody who has been held points. guilty. He's resigned. What more do you want him to do? <laughs> He has made out so two important points in the previous press conference, in as much as the complaint specifically says which is? that there has been a demand of forty percent commission, which has been met. If it is so, this requires a probe, and it is a clear-cut allegation by the BJP Karyakarta itself. 
that there is a 40% commission which has been demanded by a sitting minister and it has been given or it was sought to Sir, be given. Sir, someone so making an allegation committed, does not necessarily mean that that is the truth. But let me go to R.K. Padhya. R.K. Padhya had Jaka the position like of point. Mr. Ishwarapa become untenable. Is that why he has quit? And more importantly, what I want to know is, does the BJP have enough time to damage control uh, 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 whatever happens because of this episode? Or will this now continue to drag on up until the elections next year? Jaka, absolutely that, you know, BJP has tried to, leadership has tried to defuse the uh, ticking time bomb. But I don't think it will stop at this uh, level. Now, the fact that, uh, you know, Ishwarapa is, uh, has decided to resign, they will go for the blood. Now, they will, I mean, uh, in a way, Shishu Kumar preempted my, you know, comments that they are going to ask for his resignation. So, the next uh, demand will be for his resignation and prosecution, along with uh, two of his aides who have been named in the FIR. So, this is going to continue. And I'm sure that they will come out with, you know, allegations against a few more ministers, you know, which has been talked about. No, but Mr. Upadhyay, uh, I mean, what is, on, on basis, or, what or evidence, basis, well, I understand asking Mr. Ishwarapa to st stand down and, and to step down and to resign. But basis, yeah. what are they asking for him to be prosecuted under PCA, him to be arrested for abetment of suicide, retired high court judge probe and so on? Basis what? what basis what yeah. evidence? Now, the FIR very clearly says it's an abetment to suicide. So, once the FIR is there, he can be arrested. Whether, whether the court will accept the you know, allegations against him, that's a different issue. Mm. But uh, I think, uh, you know, arrest is very much on the cards unless, uh, you know, the BJP can, you know, cite up the whole issue. Uh, 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 Aditya Srinivasan, as a lawyer, is that the course of action that would likely now happen uh, if someone makes an allegation... Uh, it's a WhatsApp message. Uh, I don't know if it's a dying declaration. It's a WhatsApp message. It was released after his death uh, where he's making this allegation that this minister directly asked him for 40% commission. The commission was given and, and then uh, the promises were not made good. Would that be construed as abetting somebody's suicide? Aditya I mean, you, you, So <laughs> I hesitate to, uh, to, to answer that question as a, as, as a yes or no. Uh, because the, the reality is that there'll have to be some sort of an investigation into these allegations that have been made uh, to then determine, you know, what, what parts of this have uh, and, what, you know, which, which, which parts don't. So there'll have to be some sort of an investigation which makes out some of these facts to be true. And when there's some more light on uh, the exact sort of unimpeachable facts, then, then you know, then the, we, we can talk about what what the next steps will be and how they, you know, whether they will lead to a prosecution, conviction, sentencing, etc. Okay, Aditya, so give me a moment be, uh, because uh, we're getting live feed of uh, Sidrame, the leader of the opposition, also addressing the press on this very issue. Let's listen in for a couple of minutes. Well, <laughs> Girvi it put it in a now Kashdali then a all right. Uh, we have on the phone line uh, HD Kumar Swami, the former chief minister of Karnataka. Mr. Kumar Swami, thank you very much for speaking with us. Uh, your first reaction to KS Ishwarapa resigning as a minister in the Karnataka government. Mr. Kumar Swami, sir, can you hear me? Uh, this is Zaka Jacob yeah, from yeah, CNN yeah. News 18. Your yeah, first yeah, reaction, yeah. sir, yes. No, today if he decided to resign, yes. he should apologize. Yes. Then I welcome it. If he, he would have uh, taken the decision yesterday itself, he would have better, actually, according to me. But one thing, I demand the government, mm -hmm. what is this episode? What is this episode from last one month? took place in Karnataka about this percentage or some other issues, bill, bill issue. Government has to properly inquire with honest officer. What is the real fact behind in this? It has to be exposed. That is, that is my demand for the government. Sir, we are just hearing from the opposition Congress also saying that uh, Mr. Ishwarappa should be tried under Prevention of Corruption Act, PCA. Would you uh, go with that opinion? No, no, I am I am not I am not the pressurizing because because on ninth this who suicided that, that uh, person uh, victim Santosh Patil, Santosh, yes. Yes. 
he he has given into the several channel mm-hmm. in kannada channel he told ishwarappa is not asked the money so okay. people on within vidhan sabha they advised him if you give some percentage then they will give the amount that is a statement before if he is making a, making a attempt to this suicide issue mm. before that ninth itself he told several media that ishwarappa has not asked anything no, uh, so, so only sir. some middlemen one some middlemen they advised him that is his reaction BJ, bjp is also saying that uh, you know there is no evidence no work order it's all just verbal yes that is right illegally has done the work so you are I, saying I, that I, I i i ask for congress people mm. what they are demanding to arrest all those things that okay. is secondary okay. but this person without any estimate or without any orders from the government why he does the work he told he was he was a diploma di, di, diploma engineer you know everything okay without any government order Uh, estimate also without estimate he has done without the come to get uh, show the see the come to the notice of the mini, uh, that uh, local body officers okay he has done the work with the is done the work illegally how can uh, he, he can do the work okay This, all right thank you very much mr kumar swami oh, former oh. chief minister we're also getting a live bite of mr k s ishwarappa let's go to that let's go to that and, and try and listen to what he's saying no no it's a big mera mantriyo aur bharatiya janata party ke sabhi neta hain mujhe bahut sahay kiya hai aur log bhi mujhe bahut sahay kiya hai isliye sabun sabko main abhinandan dekar ye istifa ke sandarbh mein main abhi rajya ke mukhyamantri basuraj bommai ko bola hai daya se ye डिटेल इसका इंक्वायरी होना उसमें कौन इसमें प्रॉब्लम किया है उनको शिक्षा होना अगर मेरा भी एक परसेंट इसमें कोई प्रॉब्लम रहे तो मुझे भी शिक्षा होना ये सभी वो भगवान से मैं पूछा हूँ कुछ कुछ पूछा है और मुझे पूर्ण विश्वास है ये एपिसोड में मैं कुछ भी प्रॉब्लम के बिना वापस आऊँगा ये विश्वास मेरा है और मेरा सभी दोस्तों और मेरा सभी सीनियर्स है परिवार के सीनियर्स हो पार्टी का सीनियर्स हो केंद्र का लीडर्स हो राज्य का लीडर्स हो सबको मैं इस सब संदर्भ में मुझे सहाय सभी किया है उन सबको मैं आभारी हूँ सर आपके ऊपर प्रेशर था सर आपके ऊपर प्रेशर था सर आपके ऊपर प्रेशर था सर was ke as ishwarappa saying that he too wants to get to the bottom of what exactly happened with santosh patel who was responsible for the suicide of santosh patel and he has said that he has spoken to chief minister basuraj bommai he has put in his papers he will physically meet with the chief minister tomorrow in the evening and uh, submit his resignation to the chief minister let me get a final word uh, uh, vijay prasad of uh, the karnataka bjp uh, will this become a big issue sir going into the election uh, congress is now saying it's not just this a uh, particular gentleman that there are uh, four other ministers no no see with the resignation of uh, k s ishwarappa sir i think uh, he has uh, put this uh, speculation to an uh, end and he has uh, allowed the government to carry on the impartial uh, probe uh, into the whole episode a uh, whole episode of uh, how santosh patel can claim a 40% uh, a commission so having said that at the same time i would like to place on record uh, Uh, the 2016 episode which uh, santosh patel was kicked out from uh, uh, congress party when he st- uh, when he tried to forge the signature of rahul gandhi to get a recommendation letter uh, for the northwestern karnataka road transport corporation he was the same person okay and, just uh, give me a moment basuraj bommai the chief minister is talking let's listen in a prakara avaru press conference mari helida naale sankala band betti aagthe ante ನಾನು ನಾಳೆ ಅವರು ಸಾಯಂಕಾಲ ಭೇಟಿ ಸರ್ ಮೂರು ದಿನ ಆಯ್ತು ಯಾಕಂದ್ರೆ ಕಾಂಗ್ರೆಸ್ ನಾಯಕರು ಹೇಳ್ತಿರೋ ಅಂತ ಇದನ್ನ ಆರಂಭದಲ್ಲೇ ಮಾಡಬಹುದಾಯ್ತಲ್ಲ ಇಷ್ಟು ಈ ರೀತಿ ಕಾಂಗ್ರೆಸ್ ನಾಯಕರು ಹೇಳಿದ ಮಾತು ಹೇಳ್ತಿದ್ರು ಅವರು ನೈತಿಕ ನಿಷ್ಠೆ ಅವರು ಅವರ ಅವರ ನೈತಿಕ ಜವಾಬ್ದಾರಿ ಒತ್ತು ಕೊಟ್ಟಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಇವರು ಬೇಡಿಕೆ ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಸರ್ ಐಕಮ್ ಐಕಮ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಐಕಮ್ ಅಂತ ಏನು ಬಿಡಿಸಿರ ಇಲ್ಲ All right that was the Karnataka chief minister saying that uh, Mr Ishwarappa has spoken to him he has announced his resignation 
and uh, Mr. Ishwarappa will meet uh, the Chief Minister Bommai tomorrow in the evening and submit his resignation. Sanket Yanagi of the Congress, uh, you know, is this going to be the end of it or uh, are you going to further press because we heard from DK Shukumar saying that you want PCA, you want a retired judge to probe, you want, uh, you know, to find out what happened to Santosh Patil. Now that the minister has stepped down, do you believe that this issue will run out of fizz? See, now the registration of the FIR itself is not in tunes with the complaints or the complaint allegations, number one. Secondly, if the complaint allegations are looked into, it discloses the offence punishable under for the criminal breach of trust, that is section 409 of the IPC, cheating, section 418 and 420 of the IPC, abatement to commit suicide, section 306 of the IPC, and also for taking illegal gratification, which is okay. governed under section 7 and section 8 of the PC Act. However, the FIR has been registered only under Section 306 of the IBC. So we would say the hand has been unknown hand. That's directly the government, which has played already an interference. And by way of interference, the government has avoided all the sections to be registered in the FIR. Sir, I mean, on so the one hand, you're say, saying you the government only asked pending. him to step down. On the other hand, you're saying government is pressing lighter charges. I don't know. Both can't be tenable, but we'll leave it at that. Thank you very much to all our guests. This is a big story that was broken first here on CNN News 18. We told you... Uh, almost an hour ago that Ishwarappa was likely to step down and that's exactly what's happened. Clearly, one of the tallest and senior most leaders of the BJP in Karnataka uh, is having to go in this sort of ignominy. That's a wrap. Shivani will join you on the other side. ...with its 77-year-old owner to survive the shelling as well. And finally, Ranbir Kapoor and Alia Bhatt's wedding festivities have kicked off officially in Mumbai. The Mehendi ceremony was held this afternoon at Ranbir Kapoor's Bandra apartment. While neither he nor his bride-to-be Alia Bhatt was spotted by the paparazzi, the couple's family and close friends made a beeline. One of the first people to arrive was Ranbir's mother, Neetu Kapoor. She was accompanied by daughter Ridhima. Soon, the actor's cousins Karina and Karishma Kapoor turned up. Alia's filmmaker father Mahesh Bhatt and stepsister Pooja Bhatt were spotted driving into the house. The Kapoor and Bhatt Khandan aside, some of the biggest names in Bollywood also attended the ceremony. Filmmaker Karan Johar arrived in style for the Mehendi. Brahmashtra director Ayam Mukherjee was also present. It was on his movie sets that the Ralia love story began. Ranbir Kapoor and Alia Bhatt are expected to tie the knot in an intimate ceremony tomorrow. All right, Russian troops may have withdrawn from the Ukrainian capital of Kiev, but they've left behind a trail of destruction. ...by artillery strikes. Vehicles lying in a mangled heap and bodies burnt beyond recognition. This is all evidence of Russia's brutal occupation and the fierce fight by the Ukrainians to drive them out. Dozens of unexploded bombs lie around here, including cluster munition, which the Russians deny using. There are about 50 such elements in one bomb, he says. This is a high explosive fragmentation bomb to kill people, designed just to kill people. Russia's military may have been beaten in Kyiv, but they've caused unimaginable death and ruin. In a historic policy shift, Finland and Sweden are veering closer and closer to NATO. In fact, Sweden has said that it's going to apply to NATO membership within the next six months. Finland, too, is mulling membership of uh, NATO. Remember, these two countries have never historically been part of NATO. Finland, in fact, shares a thousand kilometer land border with Russia. For a long time, between the 18th and the 20th centuries, over 100 years, uh, Finland, in fact, was part of the Russian Imperial Empire. Uh, if Finland were to join, uh, NATO forces will literally be at Putin's door, much like the fear that he had of NATO troops in Ukraine. Russia and Sweden are not connected by a land border, but they are connected by sea. In fact, uh, just a few hundred kilometers, less than a few hundred kilometers uh, to get between Russia and Sweden. Putin has warned both Sweden and Finland that there will be political and military consequences if they join NATO.
Meanwhile, uh, let's shift focus now. Infosys, one of the biggest IT firms, not just in India, but in the world, is moving its business out of Russia. It is pursuing alternate options, and it comes in the backdrop of the war on Ukraine. Several other global IT giants, Oracle, SAP, etc., have either suspended or simply paused all operations in Russia. Russia claims more than a thousand Ukrainian soldiers have surrendered in Mariupol, which is a strategic port city in eastern Ukraine uh, that's been surrounded by Russian troops for weeks now. If Mariupol falls to Russian hands, then Moscow will be able to better link its advancing troops from the east with those from the Crimean Peninsula. Meanwhile, newly released uh, satellite images show a Russian military convoy moving towards the Donbass region. Now, this is in keeping with the pull out from uh, Kiev and the move into the eastern part. The Russian troops are advancing from a place called Izium. Uh, this is right in the middle of the country. The plan is to capture the strategic city of Slovyansk. This is in the Donbass region. A further push uh, in the east would mean to take the entire Donbass. Remember, at the start of this war, Russia controlled only about a third of the Donbass region. They are basically trying to create a land bridge from Russia through the Donbass into occupied Crimea. Meanwhile, the alleged suicide of a contractor in Udupi in Karnataka has led to an FIR against Karnataka Minister K.S. Ishwarappa. The FIR accuses Ishwarappa of driving the contractor Santosh Patil to suicide. Our death notally yen bardhiti dhane, our na arrest madhu beko. Our after aada basurajy Ramesh antaro immediate arrest agbe ko. In his suicide note, the deceased contractor accused Ishwarappa of non-payment of his bills. While Ishwarappa is denying any involvement and refusing to resign, Chief Minister Bombay is under pressure. <laughs> Opposition Congress approached the governor and sought the dismissal of Ishwarappa. So is it only a matter of time before Ishwarappa goes? In fact, BJP sources have told CNN News 18 that the central leadership of the BJP is unhappy with this entire episode and... Good evening, everyone. You're watching Plain Speak on CNN News 18, our brand new show with me, Shivani Gupta. On this show every day, we will endeavor to get you the news without the burden of political correctness, where we will address all issues with extreme forthrightness without the fear of the labels that may come our way. A show where we will not allow age-old narratives to keep us from recent, fresh perspective. Now, India, not just has part of her stance on Russia and Ukraine, conflict where it kept its own priorities first has been facing a lot of flack by America and Western media. Then USA Secretary of State tried to browbeat India one more time during the 2 plus 2 dialogue by commenting on human rights violation in India. He had done so when he came come to India last year as well. But India, through External Affairs Minister S.J. Shankar, a former diplomat, has not only set the record straight each time, but also shown the light on West hypocrisy like possibly never before. We will get you Jay Shankar's Boss Act that has been widely appreciated in India in just a bit. But before that, I want to break down why this was absolutely necessary. Now, the bogey of human rights that Western democracies want to preach us on, is their house always in order? Now, there's the track record of America against African Americans. They are 5.9 times more likely to be incarcerated than whites in America. Against religious minorities, the Pew study says 82% of Muslims have faced discrimination in America. On the issue of women, 21 times more likely to die by firearm homicide. Against immigrants, 5,400 kids have been separated from their parents at border since 2017. And of course, the gun culture that prevails in America, a person is killed by a gun every 15 minutes. This is data just till 2020. Then this entire pressure, USA has been trying to pile on us over Russia, bordering on threats. What about its own convenient stance when it suits it? For example, it banned all Russian energy imports, but the fine print is that Ukrainian uh, uranium imports were exempt. So again, 
it's what suits America. It sanctioned Venezuela and Iran, remember? But it has eased those curbs to boost its own oil supply now. It has condemned Russia's alleged use of chemical weapons. But the fine print, remember, here is, and people's memory is not that short, it did use chemical weapons in Iraq. It has slammed Russia's invasion of Ukraine, of course, but it has, on its own, invaded Afghanistan, Yemen, Syria, and these are just some of the latest wars that have been initiated by America. So it's clear the USA deserves it, the collective West deserves it, but the question we're also asking today is, this boss act of Jay Shankar in USA, is this India's growing confidence or a sign of mindset change as well? First up, why are we calling it a boss act and how many times Jay Shankar gave it back to the Western media and to America? Take a look. Why not condemn Russia's invasion? Wouldn't this best reflect India's foreign policy goals? Uh, first of all, uh, thank you for the advice and suggestions in your question. What those positions state is that we are against the conflict. We are for dialogue and diplomacy. Uh, we are for uh, urgent cessation of violence. Uh, we do buy some uh, energy which is necessary for our energy security. Probably uh, our total purchases for the month would be less than what Europe does in an act. This seems to be my day to get a lot of advice and suggestions from the press, so thank you for joining that. We also thank the Prime Minister and other people's human rights situation, uh, including that of the United States. Professor Brahma Chalini, strategic affairs expert, Sushant Sareen, senior fellow, ORF, Professor Scott Lucas, international affairs expert, and Prabhu Deyal, former Indian diplomat, all joining us on the show. And gentlemen, thanks a lot for joining us on uh, today's show. Brahma Chalini, I'm coming to you first up on Jay Shankar's plain speak. Is it because India just enjoys greater heft in international diplomacy that India can choose to, you know, give it back? Or is it a mindset change that has come in? And of course, Jay Shankar has been known to be very, very good at giving it back for quite some time. I'm afraid, Shivani, Jay Shankar did not give it back. Mm. First, let's look at the bigger paradox. In its bilateral meetings with China, the US gets lectured on its quote unquote deplorable human rights record. We saw that uh, at Anchorage, Alaska, when the Chinese delegation openly blasted America's human rights record. By contrast, Lincoln lectured India on human rights in the presence of the Indian defense and external affairs ministers. Hmm. And the two ministers chose not to respond to the attack. I think uh, Jay Shankar could have politely said that to advance their strategic partnership, the hmm. US and India should respect each other's democratic system and avoid leveling allegations that give a handle to either side's domestic critics. But he didn't, he didn't utter a word on the attack. Subsequently, talking to the Indian media, he addressed the human rights issue. Now, addressing Indian reporters in Washington, D.C. won't undo the damage from his conspicuous silence on the subject at the joint press conference. Mm -hmm. It's important to remember that Blinken's swipe at India came in the form of a prepared statement. A mm. prepared statement in which he condemned, quote unquote, human rights abuses in India. Mm -hmm. It was incumbent on Jay Shankar, the fact that his counterpart, Blinken, had taken a swipe at India, it was incumbent on Jay Shankar to at least politely rebut that. But he played to the public gallery at home by subsequently. But wh why have we discussing this is because this, even that, that has not happened before. Like on the oil supply or the purchase issues to Shan Sarin, you know, there were so many questions and sanctimonious questions that were coming into India and he did give it back. 
And then on the in this issue, we've seen, of course, US lecture to India on multiple occasions. As I mentioned, Blinken has said this when he came to India as well. US so-called reports on human rights, which is the US mandated report that releases every day, mentions something on India every year. But we hardly ever really say that we are also watching you. Do you think there is at least that significant change? Asked when uh, you know the Americans have made some gratuitous remarks on mm. the human rights situation in India, India has pushed back, but that's generally been at the level of the External Affairs Ministry spokesperson, mm. uh, and uh, you know the ministers have not generally engaged in this kind of uh, a pushback. Uh, but I think now things have started changing, and Mr. Jayashankar has done it earlier as well. Yes, that's on what a I number said. of occasions. On a number of occasions when, you know, he has been questioned, uh, you remember that visit of his uh, shortly after the constitutional reforms in Jammu and Kashmir, mm -hmm. uh, when, uh, you know, that uh, Indian origin uh, uh, congresswoman wanted to come and uh, berate him, mm -hmm. and he simply refused to meet her, uh, and, and the, that delegation finally did not meet him. Uh, and, you know, he took a fairly strong stand at that point of time that uh, if you're just going to come and hector me, hmm. I'm not interested. If you want to talk about something and you want to understand, uh, you know, what uh, what the reasons for those constitutional reforms were, I'm more than happy to talk, which he did uh, on a number of forums uh, uh, during that visit. Hmm. At this time, again, I, you know, maybe Brahma has a point, hmm. but maybe, uh, you know, uh, if the question was put to uh, Dr. Jay Shankar, he might have taken the position which Brahma wanted him to take. Hmm. Uh, but since the question wasn't put to him, uh, maybe he decided in his own wisdom that it's better not to, you know, uh, join issue on this particular matter uh, or in the press conference uh, because this was just one reference out of a whole range of issues mm -hmm. on which, you know, both sides were working together to make this into a major issue and then, you know, make it into a kind of a political football and the media going to town with it. Hmm. He probably decided that maybe this is not the forum and I will address this issue later on. In our own way, uh, yes. But that is, yeah, in our own way. And I think that is what he did. Hmm. But the point is what he said, hmm. I'm sure it has not escaped uh, uh, the Americans. Hmm. I'm sure the Western media knows about it. And the fact that he said that, you know, he pointed his finger at these lobbies, these vote banks, yes. these interest groups. Hmm. And look, let's face it, you know, there are these pressures in all democracies. Hmm. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, uh, governments in uh, all democracies need to start addressing some of those guys to keep them quiet, you know, keep them satisfied hmm. uh, and not deviate from the larger uh, objective of uh, pushing this relationship forward. Hmm. So to that extent, I think uh, Dr. Jayashankar played it well. Hmm. Uh, and I really don't have much of a problem in uh, so what, what he said. So what do you think? Uh, everything is, this he because, said was, is this because India just enjoys a greater, more powerful role in international diplomacy? Or is it because, uh, you know, that there is a mindset change as far as this government and the way it wants to project India is concerned? Shivani, Shivani, it's a bit of both. Hmm. I would imagine it's a bit of both. Hmm. You know, if supposing you're going to be hectoring uh, your interlocutors hmm. uh, when your treasury is empty, you know, we have the case of the basket case, Pakistan hmm. next door. Uh, you know, it, it doesn't really work. Uh, but, you know, when you have a, a, a fruitful relationship hmm. uh, and that also gives you the confidence. But uh, along with the confidence, I think it is also a mindset change. Okay. Uh, that, look, uh, you know, we are willing to take it on the chin where, uh, you know, we are not perfect. We accept there would be many problems in our country. Hmm. But just as there are many problems in your country. Absolutely. It's not as though Americans are perfect, you know. No, there, precisely. There are, there are, uh, Professor Scott Lucas, I want to come to you on that. You know, the days where America or Western democracies could dictate to quote-unquote third world countries and India which is the oldest democracy. We we pride ourselves in being the oldest democracy because democr uh, democratic culture in our uh, system has been thousands of years old. You know, not just modern democracy. We have a very old democracy. So this culture of Western democracy is dictating or looking down upon or preaching, as I said, quote-unquote, developing world or third world countries. That time is just gone. Do you think it was a little bit wrong for Blinken to say what he did in the first place, to embarrass India like this? I, I think that point, uh, which we can debate, is tangential to the issues that are actually at hand. And there are two that are related here. And I preface this by saying India has always had a powerful 
uh, vo uh, voice in international affairs. Hmm. Uh, it's quite prominent right now, hmm. but go back to the time of uh, President Nehru in the 1950s. India's always been at the forefront. Hmm. So what's the first issue? The first issue is not U.S. versus India over what is happening in Ukraine. Hmm. The issue is that there is an ongoing invasion of Ukraine by Russia, that there are mounting reports of possible war crimes and killings of civilians, that uh, Russia is not pulling back hmm. on this invasion. And this is something that India and the United States had to discuss. Uh, and I think, in fact, uh, below the media headlines you saw this week that the U.S. and India are sort of working together. I don't think the U.S. is going to demand that India stop taking oil from Russia. Hmm. They would like to see it not be too great. I don't think they'll demand that India come out and openly condemn and use the word invasion. But they will want to be let's say, establishing the fact that there is an important ongoing military, economic, and political relationship that should not be disrupted by Ukraine. Now, on the second point, which comes back to your question, which is that of human rights, hmm. it, it just so happens that what happened is that not that India was being set up this week, but there was a coincidence, and it was a coincidence, an unfortunate one, that the State Department's 2021 report on human rights around the world had come out, and there's a passage on India. And that no, but that's what, what I want to question, about. Professor. Why does the U.S. report become the last word on anything? I mean, this is indeed it's a not, U.S. internal not, report. Why does it even talk not, about India? It's, it's not the last word. It's not the last word. It's simply but the But why do they view. talk about India? It, if they were talking I, about it, Americans it, and oh, India, oh, I can oh, understand. Oh, oh, but oh, why oh, do they oh, talk oh. about internal Indian uh, affairs? Let me, let me answer. Because... Yeah not just the United States, but a number of other countries issue reports on human rights because human rights is not just simply an issue for one country. There, You quite rightly pointed out, there are serious human rights issues within the United States mm. that we should address, that we should deal with. There are serious human rights issues within India mm -hmm. that we should address and that we should consider. We should not, as one of your previous guests say, use this as a political football to say, oh, 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 go look at the other country, go look at that one. So I think the question of Indian human rights, which is something that we can discuss on a program and discuss it, I think, in the spirit of dialogue, mm -hmm. I think it's important, but I don't think that issue of Indian human rights should be used as a distraction, which is the fundamental about U.S.-Indian relations in the context... But I wish it wasn't, but it was, right? I wish it wasn't mentioned because, of course, if you were to comment on human rights violations in any democratic country, uh, there are, of course, there is, of course, a dialogue that will initiate after that. Prabhu Dayal, I want to come to you on exactly that point. You know, there has been a culture of taking what the West says about India too seriously. Do you believe that lead, led by Jay Shankar, led by the Indian External Affairs Ministry and by the government, the importance given to what, what the West thinks of us is diminishing well i think what minister jay shankar said reflects a certain self-confidence in the indian government hmm. now i agree with sushant sarin when he's felt that it was not appropriate for minister jay shankar to rebut Anthony Blinken at their joint press conference. Mm -hmm. In any case, I was not at the press conference. I do not know the sequence of questions. Perhaps Jay Shankar didn't get an opportunity. But in any case, the overall ambience and focus was towards promoting the bilateral relationship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, Secretary of State Blinken was asked a question about the human rights related issues in India, and he had to reply. But I don't think he said anything through a motor. Hmm. However, as Sushant Sareen said, Jay Shankar has set the record straight in regard to what we think about the U.S. position on the issue of human rights. Yeah. Whether he did that at the joint press conference or whether he did that at another press conference addressed by him and where the Indian ambassador was present, hmm. doesn't matter. Hmm. As, uh, as is widely believed, what he said at the press conference has reached the United, United States, States, and that is clearly a message from Would us that be a them. deterrent, though? Do you in think this, words, cha this change tone is going to be a deterrent at all, or U.S. will still say what it says next year, India will still say what Jashankar said this year? Well, in private discussions, things will be very, very forthright. The two sides hmm. will say to each other what they wish to. But I don't think that 
either side will go public on the issue of human rights because it is a touchy issue. Hmm. However, Minister Jay Shankar has made it clear that we also have our views on the human rights situation in no, the United States. No, he has said States. we have views and on your views, we have views on, on thing, what happens in the US. Report. Absolutely. I think he was quite suave in saying what he did. Professor uh, Chileni, I'm coming back to you. Uh, you seem to disagree that India did not give it back good enough. Uh, after listening to the rest of our speakers, uh, any change of mind there? Was this the so best the that... Just, you know, this this seems like the best that India could have done without making it ugly. Shivani, hmm. this is the kind of self-serving narrative that we get into in India. Hmm. And then we find ourselves in difficult spots. First, let's correct the facts. It speaks for itself that the State Department released its country report on human rights practices mm. at the same time as the two plus two with India. Mm -hmm. And Blinken's attack on India's human rights record did not come in, in response to a question. It was in the prepared text mm -hmm. that he read out when he opened the press conference. And even more important, something we have not even picked up in India. Mm -hmm. No sooner had the two plus two meetings concluded in Washington than the state-run Indian Oil Corporation, which is India's top refiner and top uh, oil importer, mm -hmm. suddenly dropped Russian Urals crude from its newest tender that's true as if to signal that india was yielding to the u.s pressure now have you seen this news in any newspaper in india no well because we certainly we read it in self-serving narrative and 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 I'm, I'm sorry to say that even even the debate that we're having right now hmm. is, is, is pretty self-serving okay you don't agree with it uh sushant sarin i'm coming back to you the reason why we're discussing though is as we said and i set it up by saying that uh, jay shankar has been known to kind of give it back to western narrative not just in us but otherwise as well in the past too he has said that india no longer you know he has uh, suggested to the extent that india no longer just looks to that kind of validation from the West. Now, of course, I am not suggesting that it's going to remarkably change India-US relationship uh, completely or India-West relationship, but this is a beginning, would you say, still? Yeah, it's a beginning, but, and, and, and frankly, I, uh, I think that this is going to become, it's going to become an issue. It already is a bit of an issue. Hmm. But look, why is this an issue? It's an issue because of a certain kind of bunch out here, hmm. which actually magnifies every little incident of a particular nature uh, and blows it apart uh, in the rest of the Western media. And the Western media thinks that what is happening in India is basically a big pogrom of Muslims or minorities in India. Now, that is certainly not the case. Anybody who lives in India knows that's not the that's case. Not true, yeah. There are isolated incidents in a country of 1.3 billion people, just as there are incidents of racism, there are incidents of targeting, there are incidents of gun violence, or there are incidents of discrimination, uh, 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 incidents uh, across America, right? Now, if we start telescoping each of those incidents and blowing them out of proportion mm. and convey an impression that America is a place where rednecks are running wild and, you know, it's the white man gone crazy. We can do that. But how does that help uh, either India or America? And I think the Western media needs to understand, but they won't, because most of the Western think tankers, most of the Western academics, most of the Western media hmm. have a particular mindset, which is a completely imbecilic, if, if I might use the word. Or they don't quite uh, understand India. Absolutely, or they, as no, Jashankar they, said, it's lobbies and interest groups Shivani, working. That is because... Shivani, that is because most of these journalists who come into India are half read, half educated. They come out here, they have no idea of the complexity of India. They have no idea of the vibrancy of India. Yeah. They come here with some fanciful notions and then they meet the same bunch of people. You know, it, they live in an echo chamber and that echo chamber is reflected in Western media, which is then picked up by their you know, special interest groups, their lawmakers, all sorts of other people. Okay. And of course, there are lobbies out there which then agitate the issue. So I think it is important for us uh, to, to nip this in the bud 
because this and will the become an issue in the American... And the start has to be made somewhere. At least the message has to go that, you know, we really don't care that much. I'll give Professor Lucas one uh, final word, sir. I have a minute left. The question that I did ask you last time was that is, there, is that sense also dawning in the Western world that they are no longer going to be able to dictate or preach? That's the fundamental question I'm asking. This isn't a question of the Western world dictating or preaching. This is a question that each country has human rights issues which it should deal with. It is not an Eastern narrative that you criticize, quite rightly, the U.S. issues. It is not a Western narrative to say that India has issues. It has debates over the Citizenship Bill and the consequences of the Citizenship Bill. It has issues regarding communal violence, which has been pointed out not just by the United States, but by numerous international organizations and not just Western organizations. It has current issues going on right now about clashes going on between competing rallies and marches and the bulldozing of homes and shops, many of which happen to be in Muslim communities. Those are your issues. I'm not telling you how to deal no, with them. No, those are our issues. My point is, why should America comment on it? Well, uh, look, it's not a question, quote, America commenting on it. Yeah, it's why is it? That no, that you, is the fundamental believe, question. Is, no, that's not the issue. Of if course it's believe, the issue. If you believe in an international standard of human rights, then it's not America commenting on it or the UK. No, if the international community was to comment, we of course, we will uh, respond to that. We do that all, all the time at the UN level. But why is America right. commenting on it? So, Prabhu Dayal, would the appropriate response then be that India should also publish a report, right? India should also yeah, sure, publish India, a report. Sure. India, India should be able to publish a report which critiques whether it's the Chinese treatment of the Uyghurs whether it's Russia's jailing of its own citizens on political grounds, or whether it's the U.S. discrimination, racial discrimination. We should do this as part of an international community. But then there is an international try. forum for it. That's what I'm saying. Why is each separate country doing it? I'll give Prabhu Dayal final 30 seconds. So that let the next level to it, possibly what Brahma Chalani is also saying, that we need to convert this into an act and not just words. The next level to it possibly should be that India should also raise these issues then. And then maybe the U.S. will know how it feels. Prabhu Dayal. I think that the next level will be that. And uh, the forthrightness shown by Minister Jay Shankar may be a pointer in that direction. Okay. Because to tell us that our human rights record is not bad is certainly something that annoys us. And therefore, we are at liberty to find faults with others who indulge in such criticism. Okay. But however, mm. in the business of diplomacy, it's always better to improve the bilateral relationship. And I think then make that them is some more sour. No, I get Minister that. And of course, that's a, that's a word of wisdom from a point. former diplomat. We take that. So, Shan Sarin, very quickly. Yeah, you know, just want to join issue with Professor Lucas. See, mm. the point is that he talks about communal violence. Mm. There was far, far, far more communal violence in the 70s and 80s when there were so-called, you know, liberal governments in India, then what the communal violence is right now. Nowadays, you will have, you know, a, a minor tiff which is blown up and shown as a communal violence. And it's not just happening from one community, it's happening all from across. Both sides. Exactly. So for Professor Lucas to pretend as though some great, egregious kind of stuff is happening in India, then obviously he doesn't know anything about India. That's exactly the problem. You don't quite understand what's happening and it needs a deeper uh -huh. understanding. But I respect your view uh -huh. and I appreciate uh -huh. all of you joining us. Thanks a lot, gentlemen. I'm just shifting my attention very, very quickly uh, to the big wedding that has taken place in the Indian uh, film industry. We're getting a video from inside the wedding venue. Let's take a look at uh, that. Of course, you can see the groom there uh, easily. Ranbir Kapoor is being uh, spotted there. As far as that video is concerned, and uh, some of the other attendees as well. This was a fairly private affair, we are told. Not too many people, 20 to 30 guests were there. I want to go across to my colleagues Mihir and uh, Nikhil also, who've been tracking this very, very closely. Mihir, just get, just tell us what's, uh, what we can see in this wedding. And of course, I think the, the wedding ceremony is over. We are expecting the couple to make their media, uh, for, uh, to uh, do their media photo up now. Absolutely. Um, not only the media, but uh, onlookers as well as fans have gathered in quite a number, uh, anxiously waiting for the couple to make that first appearance. Okay. After uh, they are uh, husband and wife now, uh, it is, uh, in a sense, a very uh, exciting moment. And uh, uh, there are anxious fans waiting uh, for over an hour now, uh, waiting for that uh, one uh, uh, glimpse of the two together 
in that wedding attire. It has been a long wait for several of uh, Ranbir and Alia fans, as well as the media outside waiting uh, for this day. Uh, in fact, it has been uh, two days uh, of uh, festivities at the Kapoor and uh, Bhatt uh, household. Uh, we, uh, uh, we are right now outside uh, the Vastu building where all the ceremonies uh, in these two days uh, took place. In fact, uh, it all began here uh, yesterday when, uh, 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 you know, the Mendy ceremony uh, kick started. Uh, that's when uh, celebrities started pouring in. Uh, many of them uh, belong to the Kapoor family. And of course, uh, uh, then today was the important day of... Uh, the actual I think, uh, Mihir, which, just hold on. I think we have the first visuals of the couple. Uh, this seems like some sort of a terrace. I don't know which building exactly, but there is a photo shoot going on. You, I think that is Alia in arms of Ranbir Kapoor. Absolutely. Uh, this must be uh, the uh, pre-wedding uh, photo shoot. Mm -hmm. In fact, in the morning, we did report uh, from on ground where uh, the videographers and photographers were uh, entering the premises. Uh, uh, right before uh, any of the activities or actions started outside. Uh, okay. I want to quickly go across to my colleague Nikhil also. Nikhil, any word on when the couple is set to make their public appearance? Well, uh, from any time from now, they are expected to come down and give us a glimpse of what we all are waiting for. Currently, we are showing you the visuals from outside the venue where the uh, wedding has just been concluded. These are the visuals you can see. Many of the fans along with the media persons and the paparazzi are waiting here to get a glimpse. Also, I would urge my camera person to show you the, the visuals uh, around of this particular street. You can see this whole area, entire stretch has been lit, uh, lit up, you know, on the occasion of the wedding of Ranbir Kapoor and Alia Bhatt, the uh, wedding has already concluded. But okay. joining us are some of the people here who are also waiting to get a glimpse eagerly. Ma'am, uh, you have come as a fan. How yes. long excitement? आप दिल्ली से स्पेशली आए हो कल स्पेशली वेडिंग अटेंड करने के लिए अटेंड कर रहे हैं तो फिर बाहर क्यों हम फिर तो अंदर कीजिए उनकी गलती कितनी है ना हमें बुलाया है और फिर अंदर नहीं आने दे रहे हैं दो घंटे से आप इंतजार कर रहे हैं वो लोगों को मालूम है ना हम लोगों को दूसरों को मालूम नहीं ना हमारा फेमस नहीं है ना हम लोग इतने अच्छा अमूमन ये माना जाता है अमूमन ये माना जाता है कि जो यूथ है यंग लड़कियां हैं वो रणबीर कपूर आलिया की फैन है जिस एज में आप हैं हमसे उनके आप आप सभी यंग हैं लेकिन क्या कुछ कहेंगे आप आज के ऑफिस ये वो ये ऑलरेडी यंग हम तो यंग भी नहीं हैं वो ये नॉट ओल्ड क्या कहेंगे मैम आप क्या बोलेंगे आप सब और गुरुजी की lots of blessings both of them. Okay, so these are the voices we were bringing you from outside the venue. All the fans are here as you have you know listened to them. They have come all the way from the national capital Delhi just to get a glimpse of Ranbir Kapoor and Alia. But any time from from now, uh, though they were supposed to arrive here to uh, give us a glimpse at uh, around 7:30, but their team is telling us that some 10 to 15 minutes can also take place. So these are the visuals. Everybody is eagerly waiting, and few of the uh, celebrities have also left this particular venue. Saif Ali Khan uh, was spotted leaving with, uh, you know, Taimur Ali Khan, who is his son. Also, Bharat uh, Sahani, who is husband to Ridhima Kapoor Sahani, sister of Ranbir Kapoor, they have also left. So, the wedding has been concluded and we have seen the lead visuals of photo shoot as well, which was done after the visuals of wedding was done. So, uh, every program which was scheduled today has been concluded. Now, what awaits the country is, is the glimpse that we all are waiting for, Shivani. Yes, I think uh, I'll request our viewers to be with us because uh, we are getting uh, some pictures, some nice lovely pictures of the new couple. Um, I think this was their pre-wedding and this was the video that we were also getting earlier. So both Ranbir and Alia dressed in their Indian finery. We're going to put up those pictures in just a bit. Uh, I think they're color coordinated in cream. Um, and uh, you can see that they're having a little bit of a good time. This is one of those pictures that we've accessed. This is a pre-wedding just before I think they would have uh, uh, done the feras if they did so. And uh, there are a few images of theirs that have come to light. A couple portrait. There is one where there's, they're actually locking lips. So... Uh, a picture where they're kissing also has been made public. And all of this is through Alia Bhatt's Instagram. I think we should, uh, let's try and show more of these images that we've got.
Okay, so even as we show you those first images emerging, this is obviously not of the ceremony itself, this is of the pre-wedding shoot, which has become a custom of sorts these days, the couple together. There are as many as four of these pictures that have been released, and uh, the couple obviously extremely joyous, happy. This is one of those images. Mihir, I'm coming back to you, I'm sure you... Okay, Nikhil, I'm sure you've seen these pictures, uh, but of course everybody's waiting for the physical appearance as well, right, in flesh. Well, obviously, and uh, you know, we are just seeing those pictures on our cell phone. These are the exclusive pictures, but have been, uh, these pictures have been posted by the couple itself. Alia Bhatt has just posted, announced, the, you know, that the wedding has been completed. And this is how the picture looks like of the duo, as we must be showing in the visuals as well. And also, uh, their team have told us that in a short while from now, that means five minutes to go and close to after five minutes, the couple is expected to come here to give us a glimpse uh, as the media persons have been waiting here since 7 to 8 in the morning. You can see the amount of people who are present here right outside the venue, right outside the uh, Vasu, which is the residence of Ranbir Kapoor and Alia, but this falls in the Pali Hill area of the Mumbai. You can see some of the vehicles have also started departing uh, from the venue, but some of the guests are also, you know, they are currently inside and the Ambani's continues to be inside because they are, you know, a close part of the family but you know one by one the guests are uh, departing but in a short while from now we will get the in-person look of Ranbir Kapoor and Alia Bhatt which is expected you know here many of the fans as we have mentioned earlier as well there is not only presence of uh, media paparazzi but also the fans have come from different places these are not only locals some have come from the national capital Delhi some have come from the nearby places this is the excitement among the people and age is no bar age is no bar in this particular activity because Ranbi Kapoor and Alia but they both are young actors but their fans you know do not belong to a one set of age group also we would like to show you this particular stretch you can see this is the road which leads towards the Krishna Raj now Krishna Raj is the bungalow which is situated in the Pali Hills area where the uh, you know Krishna ji used to live here you know, uh, who is uh, grandmother to Ranbir Kapoor. But now that particular house is under construction, but the entire stretch has been lit up on the day when they both are getting married. So any time from now, the couple is expected to give us a public appearances. That is what everybody is expecting here. Shivani. Yes. So we have those images on the screen now. There are four or five images that have been released. And uh, they are obviously of the couple, the pre-wedding shoot, as they say, or, you know, just before uh, uh, they, the wedding ceremony took place. And that video, uh, the first video that's running actually seems to be of when those images were taken, that photo shoot. That video, of course, was looks like was shot by the media or a bystander uh, below the building. But that uh, sh pictures that you see of the pre-wedding, those are uh, the images that have been released by Alia Bhatt herself, sharing a little bit of that joy. And as it often happens, uh, when it's a celebrity couple taking, uh, getting married, uh, there are a lot of people who are also extremely excited, as Nikhil, my colleague, was showing, a lot of people who've come from outside the city or state as well to catch a glimpse of the couple. And, you know, Nikhil, this is going to be uh, possibly the biggest shadi in 2022, but one more power couple in uh, Bollywood. Well, obviously, it is because it is it, it is the biggest wedding of the season because of the obvious reasons. Firstly, is that uh, both the stakeholders come from the Bollywood fraternity, and it is usually said when we uh, you know say the word nepotism, they have proved uh, both of them have proved that if you have the skill set, the required skill set, then you are going to sustain in the B town. As we have seen other you know kids of celebrities as well, they were not able to retain in this particular industry. But Alia Bhatt and Ranbir Kapoor both have a you know different skill set as far as the acting is concerned both have a you know huge fan following so this is obviously going to be a huge wedding the grand wedding of the season last year we have seen the wedding of uh, Katrina Kev and uh, Vicky Kaushal but this time this is you know even a, another thing another set of wedding which should be given much high. When I was in the national capital Delhi, I was thinking that this is a high wedding, this is a big wedding. So these are the visuals, uh, Shivani, 
any time from now the couple is expected they have already released their pictures their wedding pictures uh, on the platform instagram though uh, it has been released by alia bhat because ranbir kapoor is not present on any of the social media he is you know not that tech savvy in particular and he, he tries to even avoid the social media because of its cons but uh, alia bhat has uh, you know shared the images and we are expecting them any time from now so nikhe you were there the well. uh, outside the wedding when you uh, just how big was this uh, get together because you know one of the videos we've got from inside the venue shows uh, a little bit more than 30 people i think uh, maybe some of them are staff or you know just other people inside the venue but how how many visitors how many guests were there See Shivani we don't have the exact amount as to how many people how many the exact guests were attending the marriage but it was certainly a uh, you know private affair because we are here since 7 am in the morning and not many people have entered this particular location only few and if we talk about the members apart from the family only uh, you know selected people from outside the bollywood or you know those people who are not the part of the family only handful of them arrived at this particular location talking about the same the likes of sachin tendulkar wife anjali tendulkar they were here akash ambani he is from the you know he is a big industrialist in the country akash ambani was here with wife shloka so only handful of people handful of select, uh, celebrities have entered this particular location many have uh, already left after the ceremony concluded so not you know there was not a huge guest list but you know it was a private it affair it was a smallish affair yes of people yes. were there But Absolutely. Have, so we've accessed these images that have been shared by the bride herself. Of course, the newly married couple um, is uh, seen in some of these videos and pictures. And of course, there's a video from inside the venue. I want to go back across to my colleague Mihir also. So uh, Mihir, any responses at all? Any comments that have come in uh, from those who attended the wedding? Uh, most of them have made their way out of the wedding venue, I believe. So any comments that they have made? Any? Uh, wishes what else is happening as far as the uh, film industry is concerned a lot of people must be wishing them isn't it absolutely uh, uh, there would be a lot of people uh, who would be wishing them uh, at this point in fact many of the fans are waiting outside to wish them uh, when they make that appearance and that is easily awaited inside uh, the vastu apartment though uh, there are several uh, special guests who have been invited apart from the family uh, many of them are still inside uh, and they would be uh, wishing them in person uh, but what i can tell you is uh, uh, ranveer and alia yes uh, they share uh, immense amount of popularity because uh, 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 because of the profession and uh, uh, they have a certain amount of fan following uh, within the industry also uh, uh, there is a great amount of goodwill and uh, we would see many uh, congratulatory uh, messages pouring in soon or uh, 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 they many would have started but at this point uh, uh, those who are inside uh, very few have stepped out like uh, saif ali khan and ridhima's uh, husband and uh, they were really tight lipped about uh, all the proceedings in fact the entire family has been really tight lipped about uh, the and mehir we were talking day, earlier before the party. wedding ceremony was to begin it wasn't quite clear exactly what customs will be uh you know will be adhered to isn't it but i think if you look at these pictures that have been released closely it's uh, it's quite obvious there were fairas there isn't it absolutely in a very traditional way uh, ranbir and alia did tie the knot uh, in presence of an intimate guest list of uh, close friends and family uh, who are present for this uh, for particular occasion their big day Uh, so to say uh, and uh, that that's how uh, uh, they wanted it to be uh, all way through uh, because ranbir is uh, considered to be a very private kind of a person uh, doesn't believe although he's a, a huge star in the hindi film industry doesn't believe in all the uh, 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 you know big celebrations as far as his personal uh, moments are concerned he wanted to make it uh, as uh, private as possible uh, making sure that he also uh live this moment and the family enjoys it so that's how it is designed uh, uh and and that's why it was uh, at his residence and not at a uh, 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 lavish destination or uh, or some other place where uh, that could uh, accommodate and uh, attract a lot of eyes as well as uh, people who uh, could come in huge numbers to wish him uh, what we can tell you is that uh, 
Uh, there are several guests inside right now. Many of them are VIPs uh, from uh, of the likes of Sachin Tendulkar, Akash Ambani. Uh, uh, many of the couples are, are, are inside. Uh, uh, or yes, they are close family, but none of them have uh, stepped out. So we are waiting for that moment for them to come out and give us some uh, details of how did the wedding go. Uh, Neetu Kapoor, uh, uh, Arranbi's mother, has been uh, 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 slightly opening up now. She did reveal uh, to the uh, paparazzi that, yes, uh, the wedding is happening today. In fact, that was also a mystery all this while. But that uh, uh, she really debunked that mystery and uh, uh, gave that correct information uh, so that uh, we could relax and uh, station ourselves outside uh, the fast food residence where the big wedding was taking place. Uh, we do expect uh, her as well to come out at some point and uh, we'll try and see if she tells us uh, a thing or two about uh, the wedding and how it uh, went on. Uh, also, uh, we are hearing certain reports uh, where uh, Karan Johar played uh, a very important part in the wedding. He was, of course, present there. Uh, not only on day one, but also on 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 the big day, mm -hmm. uh, he he uh, he he did have a role to play. Now, whether uh, he was uh, there from the bride side or the groom side, or uh, whether he uh, had certain uh, did he participate in certain ceremonies where he could, uh, these are questions that uh, remain unanswered. But uh, we'll try and see if uh, we get a word from Karan as well. But uh, this is the kind of uh, people uh, who were present uh, for this wedding. Uh, uh, right okay. from Ranbir's best friend, Ayan Mukherjee, who has been uh, uh, quite a collaborator on several good projects. In fact, uh, the Brahmastra film uh, that brings these two uh, together on, on screen for the first time as a pair uh, is directed by Ayan Mukherjee uh, and will be releasing in September. But there is a precursor in the form of the wedding that happened and everybody is excited now, uh, considering uh, Ranbir and Arya are uh, husband and wife, and uh, many of the fans are still anxiously waiting. Uh, however, the uh, police outside his residence has managed to keep the crowd calm at this point. Uh, uh, but we really don't know what will happen once they step okay. out and give that photo opportunity. All right, let's uh, let's wait for that. Everybody obviously wants to see them in person. Images have been released on Alia Bhatt's Instagram account. We'll slip into a very short break and more news and updates continue. Office bills. While Ishwarappa is denying any involvement and refusing to resign, Chief Minister Bombay is under pressure. All right, uh, these are the live visuals now coming in of the newly wed Ranbir Kapoor and Alia Bhatt that are making their first public appearance now in front of the media after their very small, very private wedding ceremony. So uh, we brought you some of the images earlier that were released, uh, but this is of course uh, the newly wed couple. You know, this is not a little bit unlike what we've seen of big Bollywood weddings that take place either in private resorts or outside of India even. This is very much here in the heart of uh, Mumbai, very much in the, at the properties associated with the Kapoor family and very much in front of the Indian media. And you can hear the roars of the fans as well. Let's try and listen in actually.
All right. Uh, so there was a brief appearance in uh, at the end of which Ranbir, Ranbir Kapoor carried Alia off inside. Let me go across to my colleague Nikhil also. So Nikhil, fans finally getting that moment that they were waiting for for many many hours. Well, finally they have got the chance of the couple because the newly met couple Ranbir Kapoor and Arya Kapoor, so to say, and they stayed here for about 60 seconds for about a minute to give us good view for the pictures for all those. Uh, news makers who are here, you know, news presenters who are here, reporters, media persons, and also the paparazzi, because each and every photo means a lot for the social media. They obviously are going to get crazy. And just in a fraction of seconds, when uh, Alia Bhatt uploaded uh, the uh, photos of getting themselves married, they, it, it, the, the, that particular post got close to 8 lakhs likes in just prediction of seconds. This is the amount of craze among the, the you know the fans and the enthusiasts of the people who believe in the idea of Bollywood. So finally uh, we have got the glimpse of Alia Bhatt and Ranbir Kapoor. This is the much awaited moment and uh, obviously as we were mentioning earlier as well that this is the wedding of the season. This is the wedding of the year which has just been concluded and you see in no time the Pictures which are released by Alia Bhatt and the pictures which are clicked here outside the Vastu are going to go crazy on social media. Everybody, you know, wanted a glimpse of the same since morning, 7 a.m. Uh, all the paparazzi were waiting here, but finally it has been achieved. They waited here for 60 seconds for about a minute. And also they were uh, sweet enough to the media persons as well. They kept sending the required things for the media persons there because they know that, they, that it is really very harsh. Uh, you know, given the humidity in the weather of the Mumbai, so they kept on sending the sweets, water bottles, and some of the gifts are also provided uh, to the media persons because they are the ones who are spreading the pictures and giving each and every update to the viewers. So this is uh, what it is all about. Finally, everybody ah, is right now that they have got the glimpse of Ranbir Kapoor and Alia Bhatt. And as a true fan of Ranbir Kapoor, I can say they both were looking best. Yes, they certainly are. You know, just wait a little while so that their first appearance on screen comes out and then they can officially tie the knot. But of course, that was not the case. Uh, they decided to uh, get married uh, and very secretly, in a sense, uh, not really uh, letting the media know much of the information, when, what time, where. Uh, it was almost a mystery all the time until it was clarified by uh, Neetu Kapoor yesterday that I guess uh, uh, the duo will be tying a knot uh, today. Uh, and that's what happened. In fact, uh, it was worth all the wait for many fans who were crying in joy uh, seeing uh, their favorite stars uh, who, who, say, who, have, who had this big moment today step out and, uh, you know, uh, give that glimpse of them uh, uh, to their fans who have been waiting anxiously for long hours. Uh, and uh, it was, it was uh, quite done in that uh, manner and scale uh, one would expect from a film star, uh, like the way they stepped out, uh, posed in front of uh, the, the, the media as well as the fans, uh, waved to them, thanked them, and, 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 and in that uh, very stylish way, Ranbir, uh, you know, uh, holds uh, Alia Bhatt and takes her inside. 
so so clearly those visuals are worth for all the people who've been waiting for one hour, okay. two hours, two yes. and a half hours. Or, Absolutely. Or, or In fact, Nikhil, my colleague, was speaking uh, to some of those individuals who had come. Just, you know, uh, average fans who had come, Nikhil, isn't it? You spoke to some of them and there seemed to be a lot of them who had come from outside of the city and uh, even Maharashtra. Yes, obviously, and uh, while we were speaking to them, they told us that they are not only the locals, they are not only from the city Mumbai, but also from nearby places. There were some of the people uh, here who were, you know, directly coming from the national capital Delhi. That means uh, for two hour, you know, flight journey, they have come all the way to just see a glimpse of the married couple. But finally, everybody is, uh, you know, satisfied with the look that has been presented to the uh, people. These are the visuals we are showing you. Again, the celebrities have started coming outside. You know, they are leaving the premises. These are the VVIPs that you see on your TV screens. Now they have started departing from the venue. Many of the uh, VVIPs have already departed. But Ambani, Mr. Ambani, Mr. Akash Ambani and Shiroka Ambani continues to be inside. Many of the people you can see still they are here mm -hmm. talking to the media persons. They are showing as to what excitement they were ca uh, carrying among them themselves until they had seen the pictures also you can see the media uh, apart from media there is heavy presence of security personnel there is not only uh, the private security but the mumbai police have also deployed their personnel we would also like to show you shivani the stretch for our viewers who are watching cnn news reading that this is the particular stretch of the pali hill which has been entirely decorated the entire stretch has been lit up you know on the day when the uh, wedding uh, it, 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 wedding was scheduled so finally the wedding vows have been completed the uh, you know the, they both have got married and they both are now couple now official couple and alia but while releasing the photos online she has clearly said that it was you know a dating period of five years for close to five years uh, it is started somewhere around in the year 2017 but finally they have tied the knot and also there is much awaited film of Brahmas, which has been directed by their close director friend Ayan Mukherjee, who was also a part in this particular wedding, is a close friend not only to Ranbir Kapoor but Alia Bhatt as well. September is the release date of that particular movie, and you know the interesting part here, Shivani, is that uh, Ayan Mukherjee somewhere. Yeah, we leave our way viewers with those visuals. The first visuals of the newly wedded couple, Alia Bhatt and Ranbir Kapoor. Thanks a lot for watching. Meanwhile, newly released uh, satellite images show a Russian military convoy moving towards the Donbass region. Now, this is in keeping with the pull out from uh, Kiev and the move into the eastern part. The Russian troops are advancing from a place called Izium. Uh, this is right in the middle of the country. The plan is to capture the strategic city of Slovyansk. This is in the Donbass region. A further push uh, in the east would mean to take the entire Donbass. Remember, at the start of this war, Russia controlled only about a third of the Donbass region. They are basically trying to create a land bridge from Russia through the Donbass into occupied Crimea. Meanwhile, the alleged suicide of a contractor in Udupi in Karnataka has led to an FIR against Karnataka Minister K.S. Ishwarappa. The FIR accuses Ishwarappa of driving the contractor Santosh Patil to suicide. Our death not only yen bardhiti dhane, our na arrest madhu beko. Our aaptara ada basurajy Ramesh antaron immediate arrest lag beko. In his suicide note, the deceased contractor accused Ishwarappa of non-payment of his bills. Ye jannal pura lagu bro. Atta BJP na dikari bol. While Ishwarappa is denying any involvement and refusing to resign, Chief Minister Bombay is under pressure. Opposition Congress approached the governor and sought the dismissal of Ishwarappa. 
So is it only a matter of time before Ishwarappa goes? In fact, BJP sources have told CNN News 18 that the central leadership of the BJP is unhappy with this entire episode and they are likely to ask Ishwarappa to step down. A report has also been sought from the BJP Karnataka CSU. Meanwhile, BJP Chief JP Nadda will be visiting Karnataka on the 16th of April. He will uh, help draw a roadmap for the party's strategy for next year's assembly elections. Last week, Chief Minister Basavaraj Bombay had flown down to Delhi to meet Nadda and other people. A government school teacher in Kanyakumari has been accused of trying to convert students to Christianity and forcing them to read the Bible. The teacher has been suspended, but this is the second big conversion case to Rock Tamarnad in the last few months. Earlier this year, a young girl died by suicide after being pressurized by the hostel warden. Two FIRs have been registered against senior Congress leader Digvijay Singh for sharing a misleading photograph claiming that it was related to the Khargon communal violence in Madhya Pradesh. Chief Minister Shivraj Singh Chauhan himself busted the fake news. Digvijay Singh has now filed a counter-complaint against Chauhan for tweeting a fake video of Rahul Gandhi. Uh, there was high drama in the Calcutta High Court today. The ruling Trinamool Congress's legal wing blocked the doors of the High Court and barred lawyers from entering the Court of Justice Abhijit Gangopadhyay. TMC's legal wing claimed Justice Gangopadhyay had committed a crime by passing orders in the school service corruption case. The trigger for the showdown is the High Court's directive to Bengal Minister Partho Chatterjee. He was asked to appear before the CBI in connection with irregularities in the appointment of assistant teachers in government schools. Justice Gangopadhyay had also given the CBI the liberty to arrest the minister. Meanwhile, just days after the rape and murder of a teenager in Hanskali in Bengal's Nadia district, the BJP has formed a five-member fact-finding committee to visit that place. Now, this comes a day after the Calcutta High Court transferred the case to the CBI to facilitate a fair investigation. Five properties belonging to arrested NCP leader Nawab Malik have been provisionally attached by the Enforcement Directorate. This has been done in connection with a money laundering case involving Malik and gangster Daud Ibrahim's sister, Hasina Pan. Two NCB officers investigating the Aryan Khan case have been suspended. The officers were suspended in connection with another case for not complying with rules and irresponsible behaviour. Meanwhile, Aryan will be making his directorial debut on a web series very soon. Days after the clashes in JNU over non-vegetarian food, the Ministry of Education has sought a formal report from the university. Two student groups clashed at the Kaveri Hostel on Sunday over the serving of non-vegetarian food on Ram Navmi Day. The JNU VC has now reacted on the issue, saying that there are no food restrictions on campus. JNU as a policy does not impose any food uh, choice on any student. It is your personal right and your fundamental right. You can eat what you want depending on where you come or what you want to. So this is very clear. The administration had no role in it. 23 students from four... Namaste, ladies and gentlemen. When a few years ago, a few hundreds left the Indian shores to go and serve the Daesh in Syria, there was a huge effort to play down the entire matter. It was stressed that a few hundred don't represent a nation of 1 billion plus with a population of more than 27 crore Muslims. I agree, they don't. But it was a handful that killed 166 in Mumbai. 2611. It was a handful that murdered innocents in Sri Lanka and in New Zealand. What was also missed was that a handful were being radicalized via the internet. There was literature being made available to them that brainwashed them to the extent that they thought that Syria and Daesh was their path to Jannat, where the Bahattar Hure awaited them. Reality, they were used as slaves for sex and otherwise. They were buggered, chained, treated as dirt and further brainwashed. With Syria dreams bust, Afghanistan with the Taliban, the Al-Qaeda and the Daesh or the ISIS have turned east towards India. Their leadership thinks Indian Muslims are easy. They don't need 
to brainwash 27 crore Muslims, ladies and gentlemen. They just need a few thousands or a few hundreds and they are working on it. How? That is our mega exclusive tonight on The Right Stand. Here is a CNN News 18 mega exclusive cuts here investigations editor Manoj Gupta where we have accessed a detailed intel note, ladies and gentlemen, a detailed intel note on terror, network, a radar of forces. On the network of is a radar that is forces of hate who are using and wanting to misuse misuse Indian Muslims. Indian Muslims have been made cannon fodder. They are perceived as fragile, weak, those who can be converted or radicalized using the current narrative, political narrative, utilized as tools for jihad. ISIS, Qaeda, are on a brainwash offensive, ladies and gentlemen. They are on a brainwash offensive and it is a very, very calculated plot that is currently happening in our country. Let us try and understand this in greater detail. First up, the ISIS is scouting jihad inroads into our country. There is a desperation. Back-to-back -back busting of ISIS modules proves points in this direction. There is a Jammu and Kashmir security offensive where Ansar, Ghazwatul Hind, Kader have been eliminated. Only yesterday we showed you how 28 such highly radicalized terrorists have been arrested in 